Ponting, were you surprised that his future was called into... Yeah, absolutely. Totally ridiculous question. I'm not sure if someone was just planted in that press conference to spark a bit of controversy or whatever, but, you know, this test team in the last two years has come a long way. Remember where we were um, when I was still in the side and then we, we got back to the pinnacle in test cricket and, and one-day cricket, back to number one, whitewashing Australia last year, beating South Africa in their own in their backyards, that is just a ridiculous um, statement. And Michael's been one of the leading players in the world through that period of time. Um, look, he, he came out and said himself that he was disappointed that he wasn't able to lead from the front with the bat. He understands how important it is for the, the leader and the senior players to stand up and lead the way. And, you know, he'll work as hard as the next bloke to make sure that he's ready for the next challenge that comes his way as a batsman and as a leader. I bet it said 16 innings. He's averaged whatever for not many runs. I bet his seventeenth ago innings was a hundred, mm -hmm. so you can you can mould a stat however you want by way of um, reflective numbers. But uh, I agree. I reckon that sounds like a setup. I reckon someone's been sent in there. This hundred here, this was uh, against South Africa that in the the series winning Test match, and he got absolutely yeah. battered there by Mornay Morkel and Dale Stain and. You know, I think he broke his rib, but just kept going on. So, you know, calls that the team don't put in, don't put in the effort, didn't dig in in the UAE. There, there's a lot of courage there. Uh, as Punner says, they've progressed a long way. I, I want to ask Punner, how happy are you that you're not answering those questions anymore? <laughs> I, did it for a, I did it for a few years, don't worry. How difficult and also on the back, hey, when are you going to retire, was the one that came after that as well. So. How difficult is it now, Rick? Because I can remember it was Matty Hayden. It was the first time the journalists, in a way, started going for a player. And then when he succeeded, they moved on. It's been in cricket journalism for the last five or six years that they get a bloke in the gun and they try and fire that bloke mm. out of the side. I don't know why it's coming to cricket journalism. You were in the gun for a year, a year and a half. How difficult is it to deal when every press conference you go to, people will start questioning Michael Clark in that situation as you said is quite ridiculous. Yeah, Matty Steve and Mark both had it. I got out before they could get me. But, <laughs> how difficult is it? Bolted. Uh, different people handle those things in different ways and, uh, and the best example with it is Steve and Mark War. I mean Stephen used it as a complete motivating factor and, and Mark was almost you know embarrassed to pick the paper up and read the paper in the morning and worry what they're going to say about him. Um, and you're right, I had it for the last couple of years of my career. But I think it, it's more just when you get to a certain age. You get to a certain age and if you're, you're not performing as well as you were for your 12 months before that or the two years before that, then, you know, it's open slather. But you understand that as a player. And no one needed to tell me if I was playing well or not playing well, if I was scoring the runs I used to score. You know yourself. You don't need the media or anybody else to tell you that. So, mm. um, yeah, and, you know, other examples, I guess, of people pretty close to us that have handled, you know, the end of their careers in different ways as well. It's, yeah. you know, it, it can get to you, but, you know, it wasn't a motivating factor for me retiring when I did.